And I keep a lot of box turtles. And this is their little cinder block enclosure. And this is actually the time of year that they're going to be laying eggs. And there's actually two things that I'm going to be looking for today. I'm going to be looking for box turtle eggs, which are recently being laid. And I'm actually going to be looking for last year's baby. Now you might think, Zachary, this is a pretty small enclosure. How on earth would you miss a small one? Very easily. The only reason I've gone for a cinder block wall here instead of a wire wall is because when the babies hatch, they disperse like crazy. And uh, believe it or not, they can just hide and stuff like this. In fact, I'd have to guess that there are a lot of turtles about that big in this enclosure right now. Here we go, check this out. So we've actually got, this is a nest that I actually already got the eggs from this year. Have a look at this. So look, see this little spot here that's just a little bit of loose dirt? This was a nest. And watch this. It's just a perfect little hole that the turtle had dug. And I've already pulled the eggs from this one, but that's exactly how you'd find a nest. I've been raising box turtles ever since I was little. They're quite easy to care for as adults, but the eggs and babies do require special attention. Finding turtle nests before they hatch is very important, as incubating and hatching the eggs myself raises their chances of survival significantly. These are their new little boxes because their other one is kind of shredded. How many? Oh goodness, got a bunch of turtles in here. Hello. They might just lay them right under here. Felt kind of loose for a moment there. Oh, nest. Check this out. So, you got one little loose spot of dirt, and check that out. That's an egg. All right, I'm gonna have to be very careful here. One thing that can be rough with reptile eggs is, unlike a chicken egg, you know how chicken eggs have to be turned over? Reptile eggs are the exact opposite. You cannot turn them over because a little air bubble forms in the top, and that basically keeps a little reptile alive in there. And you've got 48 hours that you can move the egg freely, typically. And I don't know when these eggs were laid, so we're just going to play it very safely. So whatever way the egg is facing upward is the direction that we're going to pull the egg out and put it in our little incubator. Okay. First egg, that is a little box turtle egg. And this right here is perlite. It's typically used in gardening and is very good for incubating turtle eggs. Now you see we've got another one right here. Turtle eggs are pretty, I can actually tell this, these have been laid pretty freshly. They're not super hard yet. These eggs aren't soft like a snake or a lizard egg, but they aren't hard like a bird egg. The best way to describe box turtle eggs is brittle, which means they can be very easily broken when disturbed. It's important that I don't turn the eggs over and that I carefully dig them out in order to not break any that I don't see yet. All right. This is actually a very good nest. Go, big egg. That is a big one. All right, we've got four from that. And there's at least two more. Oftentimes, oh my, another one. Look at that, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, at least seven. Yeah, that's another good one. It's a little bit of a smaller one, that's good. So now we've got a fully excavated nest here. And you can see all that loose dirt came up really easy. And as you go down, it's solid as a rock. This is very tough dirt. So uh, it's typically harder for them to build deeper nests in here, which is kind of the point to where I can do this. And we've got seven, per uh, I mean, not a single slug, not a sim single problem. We've got seven box turtle eggs. No way. Another nest. Check this out, got more. Got more, baby. Oh, this is gonna be a hard one to get out though. This is a pretty bad place for a nest, even one this small. This is one of the reasons I go ahead and dig them up, because sometimes they just don't pick the best nest sites. There we go, I got another nest, and you can see this one is not as well done as the last one. It's in very tight ground, and it's extremely, extremely shallow. Looks like there's a broken egg down there. Yeah, because this was not a very well done nest, I can tell you that much. Here we go. Oh, it's coming out. Got one. One egg. Very round, which is not the norm. Let me go get our container. So looking at how tight this nest was dug, 
and you can see that that egg is a bit more rounded, which is not necessarily good. And you can see an egg right here, but I'm pretty, yeah, that's a broken egg. You can see that egg is uh, no good. It was actually popped before I even got down there. So, see how it's got a big dent? And that's just because the ground here was just too tough and she just did not find a good place to lay her egg. Sometimes that happens, but yeah. Hopefully that one egg that we've got here does well. We'll hold on to that. Now it's time to look for last year's babies. I've only found four so far this year, so I'm absolutely positive there's more from nests that I didn't see. Sometimes they like to get up and around these plants and this rock. I don't want to flip the rock over though, because then it'll do where any other. Here we go, we got one. Check this out. There is our first baby! Yes! That is definitely last year's baby with how well grown he is, and he stayed hidden in here for a while. Sup, little dude? That is our baby box turtle. Check that out. And this isn't even a newborn size. He's probably been in here since last fall, and I uh, just haven't seen him. Let me show a size comparison. Every volunteers. Check this out. Look at that. Look at the size difference there. And what's really crazy is these guys are hard as a rock. This guy's actually kind of soft and squishy. Excellent. Perfect little baby box turtle right there. Now, as you can see, be hiding under there. And they will avoid me for sometimes an entire year or two in here. It takes me that long to end up finding them all. Uh, and it's a small space, so it just goes to show you how good at hiding they are. But there is a reason that we need to find these turtles and actually take them out of here. And that is because the adults will actually eat them. Box turtles are a little bit, you know, carnivorous. They'll go and catch a little snake, a lizard, mostly bugs and stuff. But they will eat a baby box turtle if they see it moving around out in the open, which obviously he stayed very well hidden in here. So we're going to keep looking for more. That is our first baby box turtle of our little search session. So to get these little guys out of here, I've actually got a little temporary setup right here. And obviously you can see this is nothing permanent. It's just a little glass tank with no bottom. Just slide you under there, cover him up. And that is just to where temporarily he doesn't get eaten. And what I like to do typically with baby box turtles is grow them up to a decent size before releasing them. Each one of these, I remember exactly the areas that they come from. And uh, we're gonna release these turtles back into their natural habitats, back into the wild and areas where these turtles would have actually been born. The major thing with this is it's really increasing their odds of survival. You're you know, making sure they're hatching in the right conditions, you're making sure they're living in the right conditions, and now that we've got him, we can really increase the amount of food that he's eating, get him to a good healthy size before releasing him. So one thing I was thinking about is the ways that I typically find baby box turtles whenever I'm out just kind of exploring. And there's three separate ways that I find them a little bit more effectively, and I'm gonna put them into action in the enclosure. The first being, which is not an option, uh, I oftentimes find baby box turtles after a burn. Obviously, I can't set my enclosure on fire to hope that a baby box turtle comes out. So, option one, out the window. The second thing is rain. Now, we can't mimic the rain, you know, naturally, but I can try to flood out the enclosure, and the adults actually really like it when I flood the enclosure too, because since I give them so much vegetation, so much food, it kind of makes this a little pit of worms, and it draws out the worms, and the adults come out to eat, and the babies actually do the same. So hopefully, we're going to see some babies out when I flood the cage, but what I want to try first, and I know this is cheeky, is a chunk of tin. Any snake hunters out there know that this is a good way to get snakes? I also have seen baby box turtles under tin quite often. They use it in the morning times to heat up a little bit without actually going out into the open. So I'm gonna actually set this in the, I'm gonna clear out a little spot, set this in the corner of their enclosure and just wait. And hopefully eventually we'll end up getting a box turtle under this. I'm thinking that they'll be walking this edge at night maybe. And I'm gonna try and get them that way. I wanna make it nice and open. Big gap. Block this section off. There we go. Think of this as a turtle trap from both sides. They come in, they're like, oh, nice little spot to sit. Bam! We got them. <laughs> this is not gonna work, I swear. Here we go, boys. The first tin. Yeah, yeet. 
Let's see any. Is there any on here? I am bl- How am I that blind? I was looking up there. What the heck? There's no way that worked. There's no way that worked. What are you doing? That actually worked. What the heck? You little cheeky heck. This over. You, you little heck. Have a look at that. Yeah. yeah we'd be catching baby turtles out here. All right, well that was actually a halfway decent experiment. Might need to try that every year. Yeah, you get in there, you. Yeah, you lost. You lost. All right, it is midday right now. Probably about as hot and terrible as conditions for finding baby box turtles as it could be. But we're gonna change that right now. Because as far as they're concerned, it's about to be raining. And it's actually one of the best ways to find baby box turtles out in the wild is when it rains, when everything gets wet, they get flooded out. And we're going to be trying that right now and getting some baby box turtles. And I say getting and not trying to get because I know for a fact that this works. As the enclosure begins to flood, all of the adults start moving. These turtles' favorite foods in the wild mostly consist of bugs and other invertebrates, which there are a lot of in here because of the amount of fruit and vegetables they're typically eating. The babies are gonna be doing the same thing, and it gives me a way better chance of spotting them. So cage is about half flooded right now. Uh, we wanna get it right to where it's almost flooded and then stop it right there. Uh, you know, obviously we don't want to flood out any nests. We only want to keep it like that for a little while, otherwise the eggs will drown. Kind of just a really good time to just sit and stare. There's one right there. I just saw his little freaking head come up. Look. Right there. See him? It's moving. There really is no reason to use anything other than the water technique. It just works. It just works. Sup, little dude. That is another box turtle to the roster. That is, what is it, number four. Oh, there's one. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotcha, you little hip. Bada bing, bada boom. Another box turtle. Good stuff. Well, guys, not a bad day of turtle collecting. We've got eight brand new eggs in here and a decent pile of brand new baby box turtles. And obviously, we're going to do our best to raise these little guys up and end up eventually releasing them. I absolutely love box turtles. They're fun and easy to care for. And it's something that I've been doing for a while. Hopefully I'll get better with other turtle species very soon and be able to do this with others. But really awesome day of finding turtles and hopefully there's plenty more to come.